Hey everybody, Will from Studio Zombie 3D here. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Elagool Neptune 3 Plus. This is an absolutely amazing looking printer with a 320 by 320 by 400 millimeter build volume. It also comes with a dual gear direct drive, built in light bar, and auto leveling. Let's get right into it. Alright, let's get the printer unpacked. The first thing we're going to have here on top is a little piece of paper that we use for the manual leveling and setting of the Z offset. It explains the manual leveling process. Next up we have the assembly manual itself. And here we have the magnetic cradle for this touchscreen. And here we have our various tools and assembly screws needed for the printer. And here we have our spool holder arm. As well as the spool holder mount itself. And next we have our power cable. And here we have the rear upright support tubes. And then finally on this level of the foam we have the upright gantry. And on the assembly we have the dual Z access with the timing belt up top just to keep everything in sync, as well as our dual gear extruder. And next up we have the base of the printer with the electronics and the print bed. We'll just move this out of the way for now. Alright, I'm just going to get this laid out on the table so we can go through what came in the box. And here we are. And again, here we have the assembly manual with the instructions how to assemble the printer. It also walks through the various options on the screen. Next up we have the leveling paper, which also explains how to level the printer manually and then to run auto level. Here we have our spool holder. We have our removable touch screen. And then we have the magnetic cradle it sits on. And then of course we have our power cable. Our side cutters. And then the USB stick that was included with your test files. As well as a yellow plastic scraper. And our USB cable. And then we have our various assembly tools. A couple of screwdrivers, one star and one flat. And then of course our cleaning needle. And here we have the filament runout sensor. And then we have two spare nozzles and a spare length of Bowden tube for the hot end. And then our various assembly screws. And then just to keep the cables tidy, we have a few zip ties. And then our upright support rods. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the upright installed on the base. So I'm going to clear everything out of the way and we're going to start there. Now here we have the printer base, the upright, and then the four assembly screws that we need. It's always easiest to put these on their sides to attach the assemblies. It's always best if you have a printer to the size to get an extra pair of hands just to give you a hand. 
there are two slots on each side that the gantry is going to slip into. Now, once we have the printer on the side, it's just as simple as lining up the gantry and then installing the four screws. Don't quite tighten them all the way down on the one side yet. Wait until you have the other side attached and then you're going to want to make sure everything's tight, square, and level. Once you make sure everything is square and level, go ahead and tighten everything up. Next up, we're going to go ahead and attach the magnetic cradle for the touchscreen. This just uses three screws and attaches to the front side. Now we can go ahead and attach the touchscreen and then place it in a magnetic cradle. It uses a simple phone style jack. Just plug it in and place it on the cradle and it'll lock into place. Next up we're going to go ahead and install the filament spool holder as well as the filament runout sensor. Once the spool holder is secure, we can go ahead and attach the filament runout sensor and plug it in. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the rear upright support. You can either install it from the top first or the bottom, it doesn't matter. Just make sure everything is lined up and tight once you're finished. and for the top of the support rod. Now that we're almost done, we can go ahead and start connecting all the cables. The first one I'm going to connect is the one for the extruder. Just plug the cable in until it locks, and then lock it into the cable holder on the back.
Next, we're going to go ahead and attach the ribbon cable to the x-axis motor mount. I like to push the extruder all the way over to the right side to make sure there's enough slack in the ribbon cable. That way there's nothing to pinch or pull while you're printing. Next we can go ahead and plug in the motor and the end stop switch. All of the cables are labeled making connecting really easy. Next we're going to go down to the bottom and attach both of the Z-axis stepper motors. Now we can go ahead and connect the Z-axis motors on both sides. Once we have everything plugged in, we can go ahead and power up the unit. The Neptune 3 Plus has a really great menu system. Under the prepare menu, we have our move access, our temperature setting screen, and an extrusion screen. Next up under the settings, we have full features with the light control, fan control, temperature settings, our filament detector, reset to factory settings, our machine info, as well as advanced settings. And under the advanced settings, we have everything we need for tuning our acceleration, jerk, and even our e-steps. As well as control for the black light, touch noises, and the resume printing from power outage. Now, the first thing we're going to do is manually level the printer by setting the Z offset and then going through the six points to level the bed. Once you have your Z offset sufficiently set, we're going to go ahead and click on Manual. Once we click on Manual, it's going to home the printer to the center of the bed. And then on the screen, it will have six prints and then the center. You're going to go around to the six different points, adjusting the th six nods under the bed until the bed is level. It can take a little time, and you might have to run through the numbers a couple times. But be sure to take your time and get it as level as you can before running the auto level.
Once you have finished manually leveling the bed and are back in the leveling menu, just click on the measure button. This will preheat the bed and measure 49 points on the bed. Alright, now everything's ready to go with the Neptune 3 Plus. All we have to do is slice and load some files. And here we are partway through a print. This is the Eastman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles bust. This is an absolutely amazing model. I suggest you check out his Patreon to see what other models he has. They're all high quality and absolutely amazing. The Neptune 3 Plus does a really awesome job printing this. Now shortly before I made this video, Elagul released a firmware update for the Neptune 3 Plus, and to my surprise they added Linear Advance. I've done some testing and it looks really promising so far. I'm actually using it on this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle bust. And here we have some of the models I printed during my review. Everything printed absolutely amazing. There was no stringing thanks to the dual gear direct drive setup. Even TPU wasn't a problem for the Neptune 3 Plus. I was really impressed at how all the busts came out. Everything was really nice and clean. And it was a fast printer. Everything was sliced at 80 millimeters a second and there was no issues. It could easily do 100, maybe even more. And with the 320 by 320 by 400 build volume, you have a lot of build volume to print with. And if it's not enough, they just happen to have the Neptune 3 Max, with a massive 420 by 420 by 500 build volume. No matter your printing needs, the Neptune series has a unit for you. And here we have some of the comparisons of the specs. Elagul has these things priced to sell and are absolutely a steal if you need to get a new printer, or even if you're looking to add one to your setup. Make sure you check out the Neptune 3 series, it's worth your time. Alright everybody, thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody.